Show your support. Join the discussion in the comments. Hello, I am That British Guy and welcome back to the channel. Now, today I want to discuss the amount of pay-per-views that WWE are currently running and how I feel this is impacting on the storytelling aspect of the company. As you know, we have got Fastlane this Sunday and this comes only a few weeks after Elimination Chamber, which itself was only a few weeks removed from the Royal Rumble. And after Fastlane, we have WrestleMania. And obviously, between the Royal Rumble and WrestleMania, that's when all their big storylines kick in, and everything sort of builds towards WrestleMania and sort of culminates there and we sort of start again on the Raw and Smackdown after WrestleMania for 2019. Now the only problem with this is obviously having Elimination Chamber right after the Royal Rumble and then having Fastlane and then having WrestleMania, everything gets a bit kind of squashed together and rushed. And with the fact that both of the brands are now appearing on every single pay-per-view, this kind of compounds the issue. What I want to do is just kind of run some facts and figures through you just to kind of highlight what I mean. Before 1996, there was no event between the Royal Rumble and WrestleMania. It was just one and then the other. And in 1995, when the In Your House shows sort of started post WrestleMania uh, 11, that's when we then kind of got a monthly pay-per-view, effectively. So by the time we get to 1996 in February, we're at In Your House 6, where Bret Hart defeated Diesel in the steel cage match to retain the WWF title. And he then went on to face Shawn Michaels at WrestleMania 12. Now, what this kind of allowed for was them to kind of put to bed the Bret Hart Diesel feud uh, where Bret Hart took the title from Diesel. Obviously, Shawn Michaels won the Royal Rumble in January, so he was already going to be at WrestleMania anyway. And that kind of allowed them to put to bed the other side of it so that we knew who Shawn was going to be facing at WrestleMania 12. And this continued from 1997 onwards until we get to the initial brand split in 2002. Now the split itself actually happens after WrestleMania. So in 2002 we just have the No Way Out pay-per-view. And again there Chris Jericho defeats Stone Cold Steve Austin for the Undisputed title. Kind of puts that part of the storyline to bed that goes back to sort of when he defeated Stone Cold and The Rock on the same night at Vengeance in December. Obviously Triple H ends up winning the Royal Rumble that year, so he's already kind of there waiting for the winner, effectively. And then once we get past No Way Out, we can kind of properly start piecing together this Jericho-Triple H feud, which unfortunately was... Yeah terrible shall we say but that's another story for another video so after this point the brands of raw and smackdown actually split they then eventually have their own pay-per-views and what we end up seeing is smackdown exclusive and raw exclusive pay-per-views and this eventually in 2005 builds to a raw pay-per-view actually before the royal rumble called new year's revolution and the SmackDown pay-per-view of No Way Out, which occurs between the Rumble and WrestleMania. And this is all fine and dandy. Then we kind of merge the two things together again in 2007. And this is how things progress forward until we get to the second brand split in 2016. So for this whole time, we've only just got the one pay-per-view between the Royal Rumble and WrestleMania. So we can kind of use that in-between period to uh, essentially build those stories up and ready them for WrestleMania. Now what happens in 2016 when we get the second brand split is again we get brand exclusive pay-per-views. So in 2017 and 2018 we do finally end up with two pay-per-views between the Royal Rumble and WrestleMania. 
And in 2017, SmackDown takes the Elimination Chamber, and Raw takes Fastlane, and then in 2018, it's flipped round, and Raw gets the Elimination Chamber, and SmackDown gets Fastlane. And it's a little bit wonky in the fact that one pay-per-view is a bit too close to the Royal Rumble and the other one may be a little bit too close to WrestleMania, but it's workable because we're telling completely different stories from different brands, one on one pay-per-view and one on the other, just like we had before with the first brand split. However, obviously we get to post-WrestleMania last year and although the brand split is still in effect, the rosters both appear on all pay-per-views as a way of kind of cutting down the, the amount of pay-per-views that appear. So fast forward to now, what we end up with is Raw and SmackDown all being at the Royal Rumble, all being at Elimination Chamber, all being at Fastlane and all being at WrestleMania as well. And it's getting messy, put it that way. And unfortunately, this isn't the first time this has happened. If we rewind a few months back to the tail end of 2018, we had on the 16th of September, Hell in a Cell, which again was both brands together. Then three weeks later, we ended up having Super Showdown in Australia, which was kind of built as an extra pay-per-view and storylines were kind of weaved into weekly television to kind of build towards Super Showdown. And that was on October the 6th. Then three weeks after that, on the 28th of October, we had the All Women's Pay-Per-View Evolution. And so obviously we had Raw, SmackDown and NXT all kind of telling storylines leading into that. But they were also, because a week after that, on November the 2nd, we had Crown Jewel in Saudi Arabia, we were having to tell stories for that as well. Now, I know that Crown Jewel um, excluded women because of where it was, and obviously Evolution was an all-women's pay-per-view, so it wasn't too much of a crossover there, but you had both the men and the women at Super Showdown and Hell in a Cell beforehand, and only two weeks after Crown Jewel at Survivor Series. So we were all kind of trying to interweave all these storylines from both brands to this show and that show. And maybe one storyline wasn't being featured at one pay-per-view. It was going to be featured on the one after. But that one was actually going to be before it. And it was all like, well, when we consider this feud... This pay-per-view doesn't even exist because we don't care about it because that's not happening there. But this one is. So what on earth is going on? And then we had, bam, pay-per-view, 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 pay-per-view. One after the other, after the other, after the other. And it was exhausting. And it feels like that is what we're starting to get now. Granted, we haven't got the same problem where we were completely looking beyond Elimination Chamber to see Fastlane, but it's starting to get to the point where, because so many big names are not appearing at Fastlane, just to name a few, there is not going to be any AJ Styles, or Randy Orton, or John Cena, or Triple H, or Batista, or Ronda Rousey, or Finn Balor, who is the Intercontinental champion at the moment. Samoa Joe, who has just won the US title from R-Truth, neither of those are featured. There are so many important elements not featured at Fastlane because all they're seeing in the distance is WrestleMania. So what is the point of having Fastlane where it is when we've just finished Elimination Chamber? Or you could argue, what was the point of having Elimination Chamber if we're now having Fastlane to then move on to WrestleMania? Why not remove one of those? And personally, I think it would make more sense to remove Elimination Chamber because it's such uh, an intriguing and different match. It kind of gets overshadowed by both the Royal Rumble and WrestleMania because it's kind of squeezed in the middle there. So we could move that to much later in the year have a pay-per-view in the middle like we used to with the In Your House shows or what became No Way Out eventually. Have Fastlane there. We can kind of use it as a stepping stone. And yes, unfortunately, to a certain extent, it might be a bit of filler like it is most years, unfortunately. But at least with, say, the tag division or things happening in the undercard, you can kind of pay off some of those storylines there 
park that completely until maybe after WrestleMania and then build the big profile matches that lead in to WrestleMania. So some of those feuds can kind of sit on the back burner and not even feature at Fastlane or No Way Out or whatever you want to call it. Now there have been many that say what is the point of these pay-per-views in between anyway. You've got especially for the main championships, you've got your Royal Rumble winners, you know who the champions are anyway, let's just build that towards WrestleMania. But there have been plenty of occurrences where those pay-per-views in between have at least kind of shaken things up a little bit and given us new champions. Just to run through the names, in 2001, The Rock beat Kurt Angle for the WWF title and ended up going on to face Steve Austin, the Royal Rumble winner, at WrestleMania X7. In 2004, Eddie Guerrero beat Brock Lesnar for the WWE title and then went on to WrestleMania to face Kurt Angle. In 2009, we saw Edge drop the WWE title at the beginning of the night in the first Elimination Chamber, only to walk out at the end of the night with the World Heavyweight title, so that really shook things up on both brands. The year after, we again saw both titles change, Sheamus dropping the WWE title to John Cena, who then immediately got beaten by Batista, and the World Heavyweight title match at the end, Shawn Michaels interfered to cost The Undertaker the title, and the belt went to Chris Jericho, and then obviously led into Shawn Michaels versus The Undertaker 2 at WrestleMania. And then in 2017, John Cena, who had just won the WWE title two weeks prior from AJ Styles, drops the title to Bray Wyatt in the Elimination Chamber, Unfortunately, Bray Wyatt then immediately drops it to Randy Orton at WrestleMania, who then immediately drops it to Jinder Mahal, and we have nearly an entire year of Jinder. But, what I'm saying is, there is still point to these shows, you can still do big things there, and that's just with the main title. You can still easily do things with the undercard, you can still pay off some of those more minor stories, and then those stars can then kind of not feature as much at WrestleMania if they're not kind of big draw names. You could easily move things about within the tag division or on terms of the Intercontinental and US titles as well, mixing things about. This year is kind of the exception to the rule obviously with the women's division, but that is never normally held in as high regard as kind of these returning stars or the main WWE and Universal title matches so things can certainly be shaken up there that could possibly still even happen with the Smackdown women's title this year who knows there is still plenty of opportunity to tell decent stories here have decent matches but I just think a bit of breathing room is needed between the Royal Rumble and WrestleMania pay-per-views and removing one of these pay-per-views is a perfect way to achieve that. And if we were to remove the Elimination Chamber here we could then make that more of a thing like Hell in a Cell, like Money in the Bank, like TLC. It could be one of those feature kind of pay-per-views with a bit of reshuffling, have it in kind of May or June, well away enough from where you would put money in the bank, I guess, but also far away enough from WrestleMania, far away enough from SummerSlam, and why not maybe drop one or two of these gimmick pay-per-views anyway, or rotate them round a bit more. We don't need a Hell in a Cell pay-per-view every single year. We don't need a TLC pay-per-view every single year. Arguably, now you would say that we could do with a Money in the Bank pay-per-view every year because not having that briefcase kind of would just feel a bit weird now and feeding it back into another pay-per-view again would be a little bit odd. So there we go. They are my thoughts on the kind of crammed pay-per-view calendar that we are getting at the moment. Obviously, going forward, WWE have kind of restructured a little bit for 2019. It seems they have 
moved money in the bank a little bit. They appear to have dropped evolution and there is no mention of going overseas apart from to Saudi Arabia. But what do you think? Do you think more pay-per-views is a good thing? Do you think maybe we should go back to single brand pay-per-view so that we can have more in there but there's less overlap? Please let me know your thoughts in the comments below. If you enjoyed this video, please give it a like or a share. And if you enjoy the channel, please give it a subscribe. You can also follow me on Twitter at RightlyWrongly or on Facebook at ThatBritishGuy86. Until next time, I have been That British Guy and I will see you very soon. Goodbye.